Good to see everybody. Look at that. That's what I'm going to be doing in about an hour. I'll be home alone, baby. I don't know. What do you think of that? <laughs> Today we're having a special day. Uh, Bryson, we're, we're bringing him to the Lord, uh, dedicating him, uh, turning him over uh, to see what God has for his life. Um, so really being constant prayer here this morning for uh, the order for Kevin, for the whole family, for Bryson. Um, I looked at this picture the other day, and, uh, and not to necessarily the duck costume, but the, little, the littleness of it. Um, I mean, we, we, we had Elena, our, uh, our youngest granddaughter, a while back, and she's already walking around and running, and it gets nuts. It don't last long at that age. But, but my family picture of kid. That's my, my group. Uh, Jennifer in the middle there, she's our oldest, she's 27. And I remember this day when she was bracing size. And uh, I don't think she's fit in that basket anymore. But uh, anyways, you can put Bryson back. I mean, what, what, a, what a blessing, you know, family is and kids are. And what a responsibility we have. Um, this morning we're going to really look at scripture as far as not just you and Kevin's responsibility as parents, but as a congregation. Um, and uh, you might want to put your steel toes on today because you might, you might feel like they got stepped on a little bit. But, um, you know, there's, there's certain things that, that God's calling us to do as far as children of this church and in our community and in, in our lives in general. So we're going to look at, uh, um, we're going to look at 1 Samuel here in a little bit, but I want, I want to lay it out. Um, Hannah, the mother, uh, she couldn't have kids. I mean, she was, she was, she was, I mean, she just couldn't have, have children. Her, her womb is closed, is what scripture said. And, 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 and she was just heartbroken because back then, and I'm not sure who in the world Set this up that you could have more than one wife. Um, not sure why you, anyone would be really funny to go there, but um, he, did, he had two wives. Um, but uh, and, and his one wife, she was able to have children. As a matter of fact, she was very fruitful. She she had children, and and, uh, and she just didn't have children. Hannah couldn't have children. So when, when they went and, and came before the Lord uh, for their into the tabernacle to pray for the family and thank thank for the fruitfulness and the crops and the family and different things, she would almost give her the grief, the business, relentless. I mean, just put her down, shoot her down. In other words, you know, ah, I'm the wife who can produce and you can. And it was just, it was heartbreaking to her. And Aunt Hannah ended up going into the temple uh, in front of Eli. And she was praying and praying and praying. And, and I mean, she was just weeping. And she was, she was praying so hard and, and acting the way she was acting. And Eli even said to her, well, you get drunk. Don't be drinking anymore. Before you come to the tabernacle, quit your drinking. Which is good advice. But she wasn't drinking. She says, she says, I'm not drinking. She says, I'm, I'm appealing to the Lord. I, I, my, my prayer is just that, 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 that strong. That it just seems like I'm out of sorts. And, and he said, go home, woman. Go home, go home, don't worry about it. Because the Lord will bless you. And she left. And she felt really good. And, and, and her whole demeanor started changing. And we're going we're gonna to pick it up. Go to, put it up there. This is 1 Samuel 1, 24 through 20. It said, uh, um, well, let, let, me, let me continue back. I thought I had a little bit more scripture up there. But what happened was she, um, she made a vow to God to turn over Samuel as a servant. To be used his whole life. Just bless me with a son. Bless me with a child, and I will turn him over to you for your keeping. In other words, I'm not going to have him long. I know that. I know that. But you're going to bless me, and I'm going to turn him over. And this is where we start here. It says, after he was weaned. And back then, it was like three to five years old. They were, they were, they were um, counting on mom's milk yet. And after they were weaned off, she took the boy uh, with her, young as he was, along with a three-year-old bull. An alpha a flower and a, and a skin of wine. I have no idea how much an alpha flower is. Um, and brought him to the house of the Lord at Shadow. When they had slaughtered the bull, they brought the boy to Eli. 
And she said to him, remember Eli thought she was drunk and all this was going on? He says, as surely as you live, my Lord, I am the woman who stood here beside you praying to the Lord. I prayed for the child, and the Lord has granted me what I asked him. So now I give him to the Lord. For his whole life he will be given over to the Lord, and he worshiped, and he worshiped the Lord there. This is huge. Now we didn't we didn't just bring like Bryson into, into the church. He brought Samuel to the temple, and he turned him over for them to raise him, to take care of him, and to raise him up and to be a servant of the Lord. So she no longer had him in his house or in her house. Okay, she turned him over. She said, "You bless me, I'm going to turn him back over to you." Man, that would be hard, wouldn't it? That would be that'd be extremely hard. But mostly, I mean, you think God would have just struck her down dead if she said, "You know what?" I know I told you that stuff, but I'm taking it back. I don't know. It was Old Testament. He might have. He might have zapped her. I don't know. But, but for the most part, probably not. How many times do we appeal to God when something really trash is going on in our life? God, Lord, if you just do this, I'll do this. Or if you do this, I'll, I'll do it this way. Or Lord, if you if you just bless my finances, man, I'll I'll give I'll give everything I, I got I can to you. And then we get it. He's asking an awful lot. He's asking an awful lot. I don't know if I can do that. I don't know if I'm willing to, to completely do what I said. This woman is an example. Hannah was an example of a relationship with her Heavenly Father. In other words, you're, you're willing to bless me, I'm willing to give back. I'm willing to do exactly what I vow to do. We took vows, don't we? We take vows. We took a vow when I got married. 27 years ago, 28 years in March. Hallelujah. <laughs> Lord, have blessed me. But think about it. You take those vows and is it always good? It's not always good, is it? Just like your kid. I mean, you make a vow. We make a vow with God to, to bring him up in, in the house of God. Is it always going to be good? No. They're going to give you grief. They're going to give you static. You're not always going to want to do everything that you think you should do. But man, we got... We got a lot of things that, that are laid up before us. As Christian people, as, as men and women of God, making vows to Him, particularly Brian Bryson. And I don't take this lightly. I don't take dedication lightly because, because we are. We're calling upon the Lord. And I'm talking to the whole congregation here because you all will be asked some questions in a little bit when we go through some stuff. I want to go to Mark. Chapter 10. 13 through 16. There was a time when the disciples were really arguing about who was the best, who was the most important, and this is what happened. People were bringing the little children to Jesus to, to have him touch them. But the disciples, Jesus' followers, the big guys, the guys who should know better. What do you say? Go, go back to He said, but disciples rebuked them. He rebuked them. He said, get away from them. Okay, next one. When Jesus saw this, he became... I'm sorry. <laughs> right, you're a little nervous, Kevin. You're a little nervous. Stay with me, brother. All right, there we go. Sorry. Well, man, this He was indignant. In other words, Jesus got ticked off. Put it, put it in today's terminology. He was torqued. He says, what in the world are you doing? He said to them, let the little children come to me. And do not hinder them, for the kingdom of God belongs to such as these. I tell you the truth. Anyone who will not receive the kingdom of God like a little child will never enter. And he took the children in his arms. He put his hands on them and he blessed them. Do you think children are important to Jesus? Yeah. Yeah. The important thing. Do you realize that majority of the people who come to Jesus Christ are under the age of 18? Majority of the people who come to Jesus Christ 
found a personal relationship with him, will be 18 and under. That is huge. That is a huge responsibility for our church, for families raising their children. And it is. I mean, don't hinder that. What are you doing? This is your responsibility. I entrusted you with these little ones. And you're neglecting them? Really? We have to look at ourselves as a church. And this is where the toe-stepping comes in, people. I'm stepping. We've, we've appealed, we've appealed, we've appealed for Wednesday night program for the children. And we're neglecting our kids. We have nobody stepping up. We have our Sunday mornings. Pretty good. We're teaching the Word. Kathy and Peggy and, and, and Nikki are down there. But you know what? You know what amazes me? Ivan doesn't count every Sunday. I'm not going to put him on the spot, but we got, I don't know how many adults sitting up here. How many adults on the top floor? Just eating away. Spiritually eating away. Just, man, I'm fat on the word. Well, good for you. Pass a little morsel down to the kids. Seriously. Because what you're getting poured into, you are to pour into others. You are to take these little children and say, you know what? I've been poured into all my life. People have invested in my life. I'm going to invest in yours. But we don't do it. We neglect. We're going to be talking about this next week a little bit. I love how God works this out because that's exactly what we end up with as orphans. And neglected children. And then we wonder why our kids are the way they are. Really? Sit back and look. It statistics show that a kid who's brought up in a well-balanced, godly Christian home, teaching morals, ethics, and everything, are productive in society. Now, they might wander a little bit. They might take off a little bit. But God's word is to train up a child on where they should go. And when they get old, they won't depart from it. So that's a promise. So that's a promise, isn't it? Teach them. So we sit back and we do the very best we can. And, uh, and I love my son Jake. He was faithful down there on Wednesday nights. Part of it was because he had to pay back a cell, cell phone bill. <laughs> he continued doing it. But he was there. But the kids loved him. And, and, and I'm going to tell you, majority of the time he was not prepared. He'd come in on Wednesday, he'd grab a lesson plan off my desk because I printed it off for him. He'd go downstairs with the kids. But the kids loved going down there. And you know what the sad part was? They were content and eating garbage. Serious. Because he wasn't prepared. But he, he was down there, and the kids were willing. They wanted, they wanted to be that. They were starving for it. It's like a hungry kid. I mean, if a kid is hungry and they're starving, are, are we going to throw them a, a, little, a little tidbit? Really? No. We need to raise them up, don't we? And it starts with the home. Kevin and Jordan have a huge, huge responsibility here as far as their, their commitment to Christ and raising, raising up in a, in a godly Christian home. But we also have a responsibility as a family of God here to help raise them up and keep those, those Christian morals and ethics and, and the relationship with Christ intact, don't we? It's our job. It's our job. And, and, and so often we say, well, we're too old to do that, or, or I don't have enough experience to do that, or... And Jody and I had a good talk yesterday. I'm about the honest about it. And, and, and pretty much the comment came up with, well, we, we want people with passion down there. 